I did lose some weight last summer. Thank you. Thank you. I did. I did. Well, I have my appendix removed. <laughs> well, it still counts. I didn't know what the appendix was, and since I'm an idiot, I just pretended like I did. The doctor was like, we have to remove your appendix. And I was like, both of them? <laughs> Luckily, he thought I was kidding. He's like, ha! Ah. <laughs> I'm so grateful he didn't call me out. I don't know what it would have said, you know. Like, There's only one appendix. Oh, ha, appendix. I, I thought you said lungs. <laughs> To me, they sound similar, because I'm dumb. I didn't know what the appendix was, but I don't feel that bad. The doctor told me science isn't even sure what the appendix does exactly. Science isn't even sure why the appendix exists. And I heard that, and I was like, oh my gosh, the appendix is like a Kardashian. <laughs> It. It's a mystery to everyone. But for some of us, it causes excruciating pain. And needs to be removed with a knife. Obviously, I'm not promoting violence against any of the Kardashians. Just the mother. There's always one person that gets too into that joke. Yes, kill the mother. Kill her and smear her blood on my face. I think it's strange science doesn't know what the appendix does. That means nobody knows. You never hear science doesn't know, but Earl has a theory. <laughs> Earl, when you were cleaning the toilet, you mumbled something. <laughs> How is that an acceptable answer from the entire scientific community? Yeah, we don't know. <laughs> well, back to cloning everything. <laughs> they just remove the appendix. That's, that's the solution. Take it out. We don't know what it does. <laughs> and it's fine. But you know the first time they did it, we removed your appendix. Let's see what happens. <laughs> I had my appendix removed in Alaska. That's not why I went there. <laughs> I was on vacation with my family, and I had this sharp pain in my abdomen. And since I'm a genius, my first thought was, Oh, I pulled a muscle in my stomach. <laughs> That's what I sincerely thought. See all these muscles? <laughs> I thought I pulled one. Doing nothing. <laughs> and the pain was overwhelming. I couldn't move. My wife was like, I'm gonna go for help. I'm gonna go for help. But we're in a remote area of Alaska, so she just ran to nearby cabins. Eventually, she came back all out of breath. She's like, I found a guy, I found a guy. I was like, oh good, is he a doctor? And she goes, no. I go, is he a nurse? And she goes, he's a lawyer. <laughs> I guess he can do my will. <laughs> so then this lawyer doctor came over, started asking me questions. And when you're in pain, all questions are annoying. He's like, do you have a fever? And I was like, are you even a lawyer? <laughs> like, is it a dull pain? There's nothing boring about this. <laughs> Eventually, I had to be airlifted on advice of counsel. <laughs> I was airlifted, which was embarrassing, because unlike a heroic airlift of someone from a natural disaster or a wounded soldier, I was just a fat guy with a tummy ache. <laughs> The helicopter probably was like, wait, wait your stomach hurts? <laughs> yeah, it's real sore. <laughs> Do you know how much it costs to rent a helicopter? <laughs> but my tummy hurts. <laughs> I knew it was expensive. I sat on that helicopter the entire ride, just holding my stomach and praying, praying, please don't let this be gas. <laughs> Sweet Jesus, don't let this be gas. Because if it's gas, I don't think I can return to my family. <laughs> hey kids, daddy's back, had some gas. <laughs> Took a helicopter ride. None of you wanted to go to college, did you? A little out of our price range now. We don't know what caused the gas. It might have been daddy's three breakfast burritos. <laughs> Pretty much a medical mystery. 
I was airlifted to the closest hospital. They removed my appendix. They did a good job. I mean, I'm female now. <laughs> the surgeon who removed my appendix, his name was Dr. Muffaletta, <laughs> which is also the name of a delicious New Orleans sandwich. <laughs> and I do look like a guy who would know that. So when he introduced himself, I was like, am I being visited by the ghost of Sandwich Past? <laughs> Is Nurse Poe Boy about to come in? <laughs> I woke up after the surgery, covered in Mardi Gras beads. <laughs> you know, I woke up and there was a nurse standing there and she was like, the surgery was a success. Just let me know if it hurts when you pee. And I was like, Where, where's the appendix? <laughs> How exactly did you remove it? This doesn't sound like a success at all. <laughs> then she explained, right before the surgery, they inserted a catheter. I didn't know what that was, so I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> then I started piecing it together. Hurts when I pee, catheter. I'm suing this hospital. <laughs> You'll be hearing from my lawyer doctor. <laughs> what monsters, if given a choice of peeing all over myself, or having a tube inserted in my penis. I'll take the pee shower. I guess I'm old fashioned, you know? Checking out of the hospital, the desk clerk was so excited. He was like, you had your appendix removed. I had my gallbladder taken out. And I was like, we should vacation together. <laughs> what are the odds two fat Americans had surgery on their digestive system? I was released from the hospital the day after the surgery. They gave me painkillers. They also instructed me to do some walking, which I assume was part of the recovery, but it kind of felt like a commentary on my weight. <laughs> Have you ever done any walking? <laughs> Have you ever leaned forward and let your legs propel your fat ass? <laughs> Let's take a break from your motorized scooter. <laughs> And I was in Alaska, so I thought this was perfect. So I returned to my family, and we immediately went on a hike. And it was great, Alaska's beautiful. My kids were having fun, I was pretending like I enjoyed being outside. <laughs> and then suddenly we saw a bear, like 500 yards away, this huge brown bear, like way bigger than a gummy bear. <laughs> and I was so excited, because I watch nature shows, but I had never seen a bear in person. So it felt like a celebrity sighting. I was like, oh my God, I've watched you on Animal Planet. <laughs> so much taller in person. Can we do a selfie? <laughs> but unlike a celebrity sighting, there was the risk of death. <laughs> like you never hear, we're in a restaurant, Tom Hanks walked in, and then he came over and murdered my family. <laughs> that never happens. But the bear was far away. So I took out my phone and I started taking pictures. And then suddenly the bear stood up, roared, and looked right at me. <laughs> started creeping towards me, tilting his head back and forth, almost like he recognized me. <laughs> that guy looks like Philip Super Hoffman. <laughs> I, was like, I was terrified. <laughs> Luckily, we were with a tour guide, and I looked at him, and he goes, don't worry, I have bear spray. And I was like, do you have anything stronger? <laughs> like a bear gun? Because I don't think this bear's approaching to get his hair done. And the bear kept coming, kept coming. And then suddenly the tour guy goes, okay, I want everyone to start walking backwards slowly. Walk backwards slowly. I guess so the bear could catch up. <laughs> so we started walking backwards slowly. By then the bear was in a full sprint. I had surgery 12 hours ago, so I smelled delicious. I was also sunburned, so I probably looked like a giant land salmon. <laughs> Bear couldn't believe his luck. Like, I'm not going to have to eat for a month. He's like, I'm going to die. I'm going to be eaten by a bear. Which is ironic, given how many animals I've eaten. <laughs> so I started humming Circle of Life and continued walking backwards slowly. I should point out, it's not like we were walking backwards slowly to a car or a cabin. We were walking backwards slowly to nothing. <laughs> it probably looked like we were teasing the bear, like, come and get it, Mr. Bear. <laughs> Are you looking to get a little grizzly? <laughs> Craving a little 2XL, are you? <laughs> and before you knew it, the bear was upon us, and he killed us, and we died. <laughs> it's 
such a bloody mess. No, what really happened is at one point the tour guy pulled out this thing. It looked like a pen. I was like, great, he's going to ask for the bear's autograph. <laughs> and I learned later on it was a bear flare, and he squeezed it, and this tiny fireball went out towards the bear. And I was like, oh, good, something to anger the bear. <laughs> but the fireball bounced off the bear. The bear stopped and then just ran the other way like it forgot something at home. <laughs> And we all looked at each other like, oh my gosh, that just happened, that just happened. And that's a true story. Well, most of that's true. <laughs> well, it's all true, except there was no bear. Hi, I'm Jim Gaffigan. And I wanted to just thank you for watching that video. It just makes me giddy. I mean, not giddy, but makes me happy. And frankly, I don't have much more time on this planet, and I was, I guess if there's anything else I'd want, it would be if you would subscribe, but you don't have to do it. I know you're busy, you know, you're cool. You've got other videos to watch, but if you hit subscribe, I don't know, maybe I'll have the willpower to pull it out. That sounded dirty.